Hello everybody, this is part two of my series of rebuilding a pair of Floorshine 96624 long wing bluchers at home. If you didn't already see the first part, go back to the description of this video, click on the link to see part one. Uh, so here's part two, uh, where I left off before, I was about to put on the midsole and the outsole, and uh, so this should get exciting, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cordovan. Can you tell the difference? Now here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is, though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. Look at that. And here they are, all finished up. That was stressful. Man, look how close this is to being too small. I think it's gonna be okay. Holy crap, holy.
Oh, guys, here's where we're at. I am so frustrated. There's like an infinite amount of things you can screw up doing this. The sole is not quite wide enough there, do you see? It's actually, I mean, I can't grind anymore. I won't have enough welds. Maybe I could go a little bit more. I'm gonna stitch them on and then maybe finish the edges up a little more. So it happened on both shoes. This shoe had happened on the inside. This shoe had happened on the right outside. Ah, oh well. Someday I'm gonna figure this thing out. The length came out okay. I was okay on length. Just barely, but it's okay. Next part that I'm pretty scared about, nervous about, using this tool here. It's not working. I think I need a new bit on it, but I found a workaround that, that works. So that hole, this is supposed to cut a groove. It doesn't, it winds up just making an indentation, which is good enough because then I'll come back with a separate tool to actually make the groove. What I figured out is this edge here. I spent a lot of time finishing this edge. Not to get it 100% smooth, I'm gonna do it one more time, but to shape this edge. Because when this edge is canted, for example, this tool follows that cant, and then this groove winds up not being in line with those holes. Does that make sense? That one came off in one piece. Not as good as machine, obviously, but well, I'm happy with it. Yeah. 
tool I created in, uh, for my last video. It's a pair of channel locks, if you didn't see it. And I took, uh, those are, it's an Allen wrench. I cut the Allen wrench into small lengths, welded it on, and sharpened them to a point. This creates the holes in the weld, theoretically. putting marks on the welt. I need to grind down the nose of this tool on back. And it's not much of a difference, but I think it's gonna be enough. I ground down a little bit of the nose of there, smoothed it off. And the next hole. I really need the son of a mother. Okay. I really need to get like an underhand grip. next welt hole so then I can see perfect yep that's gonna work I think doing this stuff is one continuous learning process I might have just ruined the finish on the other shoe over there I sprayed them with alcohol water mix to soften the leather and the alcohol reactivated the dye, and the dye is running off. So, uh, whatever. I'm just gonna keep plowing forward.
Here's a close up of the uh, welt with the holes punched. The edge here, I will finish better. soul so now I've got a loop if you haven't seen this before this is one piece of thread right so this is where it starts and I go through the hole now I see there's a loop the loop could be the loop could be in front of the needle, as I am moving this way, or behind. It has to be behind. You have to go through behind. If you don't, it gets all messed up. You'll need to pull on the thread. Wrap it around. One stitch done, approximately 200, 199 more, something like that. There's probably 200, 220 stitches here, something like that ballpark. Next hole, look for that hole, aim. I don't know if you guys noticed in my last resoling at home video that I released recently. The uh, pair of Allen Edmonds Graysons I resold. I don't know if you guys noticed how many outfit changes I had. Now I'm not vain enough where I'm gonna not vain enough or unless it's specifically a video about outfits, I'm not changing clothes in the middle of a you know session. The reason I had so many outfit changes, I probably wore at least five different, six different, you know, sets of clothes in that video. Because I did this over many nights. And I'll be honest with you, there are nights I just, this part is tedious. I don't feel like stitching. But I focus on the goal and how it's going to feel like to have a cool video and a cool pair of shoes <laughs> done. And try and motivate myself to do it on those days I don't want to. Next hole, look for that hole. Yeah, it started to come out where I didn't really want it. That's as good as it's gonna get, okay out and back it off a little bit make sure that loop is open but it 
through. Draw it back. Over and over and over. not easy. Heel blocks have to be, heel block needs to be squared off, will be installed, so that little pencil line, if you can see it, is where the heel blocks will cover up, so you won't see things like that, but not perfect, but not bad, I don't think. There's beeswax in that, I'm gonna have to clean it off, this one I cleaned off. For the most part, you can still see some beeswax over here. And here's the top side. Next part I am putting on, I'm not using, uh, I'm not going to reuse the old heel blocks. And is that kind of cool? I think I showed this earlier. You can see where those individual squared off nails were. You can see the spot where the V cleat was, right? So that means the V cleat goes on the outside. So this would have been the right heel. Uh, v cleat on the left, this would have been the left heel. And left shoe, left heel. Very, very low heel block, right? And you can see then there'd be a top lift. Uh, I think these were the actual top lifts that were on them. You can see the remnants of the indentations. So it would have given you something like this. I put a new heel, um, you know, a new sole on it, so I may have changed the balance, but that's not good. You see that gap there. And it's even worse. So uh, heel block. It's a little bit thicker than the original, you can see, right? Okay, but in my new leather top lifts, but you can see when I have these on here, how bad the heel balance is. So I'm gonna have to grind that out to not have that big gap. That is my mission.
This is not as easy as it looks. I'm really nervous about this. These nails have to get them just the right length. And you, you say, oh, just put it up there and measure it, Bob. Well, yeah, but this is not that thick where the nails are going in, if you catch my drift. So this isn't, again, as quite as easy as it looks. I'm doing a little bit of guesswork and crossing my fingers. And the nails I'm using, you see these? These threaded nails, they're not really threaded, ring shank nails. Why do I use ring shank nails? Because my virtual mentor, Steve, at Beat Leather Leatherworks, uses them on his jobs. I don't like where that hole is. It's so far out, so I made a new one. And they didn't poke through, thank God. <laughs> hmm. This part, to be quite frank with you guys, is uh, the part I'm the most nervous about right now because this is where I'm either going to make or break the shoe, um, is trying to get the edges of the soles and the heels smooth. And um, I've got some great advice from Tony Wyatt. I'll put his information in the description below as well. He gave me some tips on uh, finishing these. Now, I don't actually know that anybody really cares about this part, but here's some details on what I figured out about finishing the heels. First of all, I know it looks like when this video is sped up that the belt sander is wiggling all over the place, but really when I'm using it, it moves. It doesn't feel like it's moving uh, any significant amount. First of all, there's three areas on the belt sander that I'm using. Uh, the closest to myself is the front, that front edge of the roller. Uh, it's cylindrical, it's round. It's smooth, it is straight. Uh, but it's very hard. The second area is the flat area that the belt sander is actually designed to do the sanding on. That's the part on the top of it underneath that stainless steel flat metal surface. Now that part obviously is pretty flat um, and horizontal. Now there's also a third part between that flat plate and the front roller. There is the part of the belt that spans and the advantage to that part is when you press into it, the belt itself will deflect and you get a nice curve. So here's what I've kind of figured out. The, you get the best control on the front cylindrical edge, although it is the harshest contact. It's a line contact, which is really, really difficult actually to get a curved surface from a surface that's curved the other way. Other way. You gotta have a really smooth hand as you're drawing the heel in an arc. If you push too hard at all, it digs right in and makes a gouge. The other place that you can sand is on the flat area, and that's planar contact, which is pretty good, but you can flat spot things pretty quickly if you're not careful there. The span that flexes is great for keeping a curve, 
But the downside to that is because it flexes, it's not straight. And that's what I used to use that a lot, that span, um, you know, because every part of the sole or, or the side of the heel is curved. But then what happens is I, I figured out you get waves in that. So that's why I've started to use actually the more difficult areas. I don't know if I'm articulating this well or if that made any sense. Okay, I hope there's not too much background noise here, guys. I've got uh, a, actually a girl's birthday party going on back in the background here. So what I've got now is, this is from the days of working on cars. I still have, a, I don't know, a few dozen yards of this stuff. So uh, that's, let's start with a small, rougher grit. So I've got 220 grit. Uh, I think I found a piece of, uh, this is 320 grit. Um, and then this is 400 grit, and I also have a couple pieces of 800. 800 almost feels like a paper bag, and I'm just going to spend some time in this and see if I can get this edge finished really nice, which I have to date yet not done a, a good job on. So, I am elated. That edge finish. This is finally what I've been trying to accomplish. And by the way, I finally figured out the trick. I figured out the secret to getting that smooth finish. The trick, the secret, was the fact that I just had to put in more effort. Uh, and I had to take more time on it than I was willing to in the past. Coming down on the grits of sandpaper, you know, coming down from the... Uh, 36 in the belt sander to getting 120 grit, which I'd never had before this, and then going to the 220, then the 320 and the 400. I noticed when I hit 400 grit, just from sanding with 400 grit, the leather edge, the heel edge actually had a little bit of a shine on its own. So that was really the whole key and the whole secret there was just more time, more energy, just like a lot of other things. And uh, so that's another thing that I'm really pleased about. And I think this is gonna bring us to a stopping point in this video. Uh, part three will be posted within 24 hours from when this one is posted. So please come back, subscribe to my channel if you feel so inclined. Please hit the like button if you did like this and uh, drop a comment below. If you enjoyed this video and wanna see more like it, go to my YouTube page, Robert Powers, and then click on playlists. And from there, you can go to things such as before and after videos where you'll find a whole list of videos similar to this one. All right, thank you very much for watching. God bless.